Hi there, Nathan Patrick Taylor here, and today I wanted to take you through the process of putting together a timeline visual inside Power BI using data that is fed in from SharePoint. So this is a visual that was made available or at least promoted in the February 2018 update to Power BI. I want to keep it short and sweet, so let's jump on over to Power BI and build out this visual. All right, so inside Power BI, what we're gonna do is head on over to the visualizations tab here, and we're gonna pick up the, uh, we're gonna hit the ellipsis, the three dots, and go to import from marketplace. And inside the screen that pops up, we're gonna go down to the time selection here and scroll down until we see a visual called as timeline. And we'll add that to our list of visuals here. We should get an imported successfully message and uh, see the new visual listed here. So I'm just going to click on it and get a, a little placeholder for that visual and then uh, and then start to drop uh, some data in here once I've connected to SharePoint. So a uh, little bit of a two-step process and gives you an idea of some of the flexibility that Power BI has when connecting to external data, so, data sources. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go over to get data here and uh, we'll choose from this list uh, online sources and we're going to choose uh, SharePoint online list. Now, if you are not using SharePoint online or uh, part of the Office 365 package, sometimes I just call it SharePoint 365. If you're on premise, there's a different connection that you're going to use to connect to that data uh, for that particular um, for that particular data set. In that case, you're going to go to other instead of online services and choose a SharePoint list from here. So that's the on-premise connection to SharePoint. Since we're going to use uh, Office 365, we're going to use the SharePoint online list. And I'm just going to click connect here. And then it's going to ask me for the site's URL. And in this case, what I'm going to do is just copy the URL from my site and paste it into the uh, the connection here now I'm going to mask it for security reasons uh, I'm not going to put it put it in here but that URL you want to paste is the root URL so it should be something like HTTP, https colon slash slash your company name dot sharepoint dot com that's the that's the only thing you want to put in that list if you're putting the full path to the subfolder of the subsite that contains the timeline list, then you're going to get an error message when you try and paste it. Uh, it's going to say something like it couldn't validate or it couldn't log in. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and show you what that looks like when you do it here. So I'm going to put in the wrong information here. In fact, right away I get a, uh, a notice that says that the URL doesn't work. If I back out part of the name and click OK, I'll get this page that pops up um, almost as if it wants to authenticate and it can't authenticate. Uh, if I go back uh, and then just remove the portion that isn't part of the root site and click OK, then I'm going to log in. All right, from there, the reason I'm putting the, the root SharePoint site into the URL is because it's going to come up with a list of sites that I can connect to that's part of my SharePoint mm -hmm. site. And in this case, I have a uh, page that is a is a uh, project template page. It's actually a, a tasks uh, subsite inside SharePoint. So I'm I'm going to connect to data that's already got timeline information as part of its data set. So it's going to visualize inside the timeline visual pretty well. So uh, here I click it. Uh, it lists all my sites, but I know the one that I want. Uh, I can see the data there, and then I'm just going to click load. And then we'll just wait for the site to load the data in. All right, so once it's loaded, what I'll do is I'm going to expand the list of available items here. And uh, the, the visual itself wants a, a start and end date, which is actually pretty easy for the task data set that's coming from SharePoint because it has a start date and an end date uh, naturally as part of it. Actually, uh, the end date here is called the due date. As part of that data set. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over uh, and I'm going to change the 
the uh, type of data that it is. When it's coming from the SharePoint site, it's defaulting to text data, and that's not what type of data is. It's actually date time data. And I'm going to accept this notification about it potentially changing the format of the data here. And we'll change date time to uh, be a full, uh, I want it to be actually be a two position year and two position month. So I'm gonna go down and four position day, uh, two position month, two position day, four position year. That's what I want it to be. So we'll choose that. And um, I have to do the same thing for the start date here. So we'll go change it to date time, accept the warning, go back, and then choose the format that I want it to be displayed in, sort of down at the bottom here. Uh, that's the one that I want. Okay, so now the the display is correct the, uh, that, that I'm gonna have for the data. I need the category and the entity. And so in this case, the entity, what I want the entity to be is the title of the actual project itself. So we'll drop that in there. We can already see the visual starting to uh, take shape here. And then for the category, I'm going to use the priority of the task in SharePoint. And it's a, it's a one, two, or a three, uh, you know, like low priority, medium priority, high priority. And you can see them color coded here, light blue, dark blue, and an orange one that's high priority. So just based on this visual alone, I can sort of see from it that there's, uh, there's some items in here that are overlapping a little bit. And uh, like here at the end, there's four particular projects that are overlapping. Uh, and then there's uh, there's some where there's, some, some, there's a little bit of a gap, so I can go back and change those. But one other thing I would add to this is just a table that contains some of the detail in here uh, that I have, like the title is a good one. Um, the start date and the due date is good just to get a little bit more feel for what's actually in those fields. I'm going to make them dates instead of a hierarchy in there. If I had a description in some of these, and, and I believe some of them actually do have uh, have detailed descriptions, might be in the body portion of it there, I could drop the body in and take a look at that as well. Uh, the status can go in there, and uh, and so can the priority if I want to drag that and drop that in there. Okay, we can see. Of course, I have some projects that are completed in there as well. If I click on the uh, focus mode here, I can expand this a little bit and take a look at some of the projects. If I click on the entity itself, it will sort it by the entity name, so I can view it by name. If I go back and I click on the x-axis here, it'll resort everything uh, in, in chronological order. So those are those are really nice features now as far as my my critique of the visual some things that i would like to see in it uh maybe a hover over here where i could choose what when i hover over a particular uh, timeline item i maybe get some additional data that i can choose in the visual itself i would like to be able to adjust the size of the entity's layout just like i can inside one of inside the table layout here uh dynamically on screen that would be really nice if I could do that there as well but for an in initial visual it works out really well all right so I'm going to leave this pat this particular video here let me know if you have any comments or anything else you want me to cover in the comments don't forget to subscribe and like to the channel if you want to see more videos thanks